Welcome to Butterflies of Wisdom, everyone. This morning, I have Miss Peter Shakeman with me, so without further ado, I'm going to let Peter take it away. Well, thanks so much for having me. I appreciate it. Um, I am thrilled to be here. <clears throat> I, uh, I've had a very simple, my bio, my background is, is pretty simple. I, I got lucky several times. I've worked, worked my butt off, but, <clears throat> but I've gotten lucky. I started a, um, a PR firm, um, which was my first company that started. I launched it in 1998, and it was designed to help uh, sort of dot-com and Internet companies do better at PR. I sold that in 2001. I've consulted for several years, and I launched a company called Help a Reporter Out, or Harrow. And Help a Reporter Out sort of changed yeah. how journalists. Yeah, I'm still here. Hey, Lucia? Yes. No, okay. I just say yes because I know your company. Oh, okay. And a lot of people do. So, yeah, so help, help, yeah, help a Reporter was great. It sort of changed how PR people worked and intersected. And then uh, from there, I've written several books on customer service and on ADHD. I run a podcast for people with ADHD. It's the number one podcast for ADHD. Uh, it's called Faster Than Normal. And um, I'm a speaker on TV and on, in the news, and I, I give speeches around the world. And I consider myself very, very lucky. I've gotten, I've gotten very lucky. So, okay, I came to know you from your podcast. I actually followed you on Twitter, believe it or not. And so, do you have ADHD, or why did you start the podcast? So, I do have ADHD, and I was diagnosed with it um, as a child. Well, I'm sorry, I wasn't diagnosed as a child. I was diagnosed as an adult, but I always knew that I was different growing up as a child. And it took me sort of a long time to figure out, uh, you know, what was different about me. And I realized that my ADHD, eventually I realized my ADHD was what was Sort of different and what allowed me, you know, it caused me a lot of trouble growing up, but also allowed me uh, tremendous growth um, and sort of learning how to use it and learning how to benefit from it became incredibly helpful to me. So, okay. Now, I have the, I have a funny feeling that I'm going to ask you a dummy question there, Peter. What? Is exactly ADD versus ADHD. Well, ADD is attention deficit disorder. It's essentially the inability to uh, pay attention. ADHD throws in hyperactivity. So instead of just having the, the inability to pay attention, we uh, we uh, deal with that by becoming more hyper. In my world, the two are really sort of interchangeable in the respect that ADD and ADHD, uh, the tools that I use to handle my ADHD are still very usable for people with ADD as well. So this, in my world, there's really not that much of a difference. So in your world, it's um, really not that much of a difference. And have you seen benefits from doing the podcast on a subject that you're really passionate about? Oh, most definitely. I mean, I've seen a ton of people who – not only have it, but who are using it to their advantage. You know, we've interviewed these people on the podcast. It's great to sort of see how how they're using it, what they're doing with it, how they are uh, how they are benefiting from it, and it's it's wonderful to um, to uh, sort of learn. You know, what other people are doing, tips and tricks and things like that to to allow their ADHD to to shine and for them to really use it as what we call it as a gift, not as a curse. We call it abilities, not disabilities here. Exactly. And so, yeah. And so I wanted to ask, ask you, what would be the best advice for the, let's say, the kindergarten teacher who has a child who may have ADHD but is not diagnosed yet, and what is the best advice from you um, being a podcaster and an author and having ADD and having all these challenges, what is the best advice for all of these scholastic um, educators out there who don't know what the heck they're doing? 
It's a great question. I think for me, um, I've learned that the best advice I can give you is to understand that you're going to make mistakes, but that that's okay because as long as you learn from them, they're not really mistakes. You learn how to do things differently and how to improve every single time. So every time I screw up, I really consider that a gift because I've learned from it. And also I would suggest that the other thing I would recommend is not to care so much about what other people are doing. Focus on yourself. You know, it's, it's, uh, I've yet to meet anyone whose opinion has helped me pay my mortgage. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I can see where you're coming from because we all, except those of us in the educated world, we all look at ADD and ADHD as as a good. Yeah, it's really not. If you basically all it is, it's having a faster brain and. If you imagine a car, it's having a, a much faster car. Everyone wants a much faster car, right? But you have to understand how to drive it. If you don't understand how to drive your new faster car, yeah. well, then you're going to smack it into a tree. So you, need, you just need to work on learning yeah. how to drive your new faster car. Exactly. So you need to learn how to um, learn how a faster brain works. I mean, my fan base knows. I have terribly disabled palsy. I will be celebrating my 30th birthday in June. I have the brain of, slightly damaged brain, of a typical able bodied woman. But right. for me, it takes a little bit more processing time. But still, don't treat me as a bag of rocks. And of course so not. I think with uh I think with a lot of these people they're treating ADHD and ADD as if they don't have the lights on. Well that's the problem. You know, they, they, they look at it as a disability and I say it's actually an ability and you can use it to your advantage if you know how. You know, if you know how to uh train your brain to be faster, to work faster, you can do incredible things. Yeah, I believe that, too. I highly believe that. And so, Peter, what is your favorite podcast if you have one? I'm sorry. My Well, my favorite, so I love mine, obviously, but uh, I listen to a lot of podcasts. I listen to podcasts about entrepreneurship. I listen to news podcasts. Um, right now, I'm currently in love with one uh, that um, – talks about the, the TV show The West Wing. Every week they come up with a new episode of The West Wing and they dissect it. It's called The West Wing Weekly. I'm a huge fan of that right now. So that's currently what I'm listening to. And what is your favorite audio book? And it doesn't have to be business related. It just has to be a book that you go back to time and time again. My favorite audio book. I read a book last year called um, – Diary of an Alcoholic Housewife, which was about a reporter who lives in the Midwest who was uh, who finally came to the realization that she had a problem with alcohol and how she uh, – it was a diary about how she managed to deal with it. And um, I uh, – while, I, while I, I don't necessarily know if I'm an alcoholic per se, I do have uh, – because of how my faster brain works, I do have uh, only two speeds. I have, you know, really just sort of uh, sleeping and then all the way on. And so I've, I've quit drinking as well because of, uh, you know, it, it's hard for me to just have one drink. So I, I enjoyed that book and I, I, I related to a lot of the things the woman in there said. Isn't that interesting that you uh, can calm your brain down enough to go to sleep, but then once you wake up, it's all the way on. Well, that's it. I, I joke. Um, the 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 sort of off color comment that I make is that I have two speeds. I have namaste and I'll cut someone, and that's pretty much it. Um, you know, well, and because of that, because of that, I need to understand how my brain works. I need to understand. You know, I I have to sort of eliminate situations that can uh, get me in trouble. I love it. Yep, I I definitely agree with you on my end. I have to eliminate situations that can get me in major trouble because I have the tendency to have the ball in the china shop attitude 
I know what I want. I know how to get it. And that's final. Yep. Yep. And you probably have the same thing I do. And so to get um, back to your bio a little bit, why did you sell Help Will Be Pawned Out? Well, I like helping people. I'm a big fan of creating things that, that benefit people and um, that, that sort of help people do things uh, better. And I like connecting people. I like putting people in touch with other people. So for me, it was, you know, reporters would call me all the time and they'd say, hey, you know, I'm working on this story. Do you know anyone? And, and I just, I'd find someone for them. And after a while, it just sort of became, uh, you know, easy. <laughs> and I said, well, I could probably do something with this. Yeah. And so who owns it now? So it was acquired by a company called Vocus, and then Vocus was acquired by PR Newswire. So it's owned by PR Newswire right okay. now. Okay. It's, I thought it was acquired by Vocus. I, I wasn't sure. And what has been your biggest entrepreneurial success? I'm sorry, uh, one more time? What has been your biggest entrepreneurial success? Oh, I, I definitely think. Definitely selling Help a Reporter out, no question about it. I mean, that was, you know, building that up as quickly as I did and selling it three years after I started it was definitely uh, definitely part of it, no question about it. Yeah. Well, that would be anyone's entrepreneurial success. I mean, Help a Reporter out is huge. And for those of my listeners who are now thinking, oh, this site is Help a Reporter, it's cool, um, could you please explain to us what it actually does? I know what it actually does, but for those who are listening that don't know, I'm going to let you explain what it does. Yeah, Haro is basically a service that allows you to sign up for a mailing list, and this mailing list sends you queries from journalists every single day. So three times a day, you get queries from journalists who are looking for um, – sources on any topic. If you can answer any of those questions, you simply reply directly to the reporter and you can get quoted in the newspaper. It is literally that simple. Um, you know, and reporters who use us range from um, the Associated Press, the Wall Street Journal, New York Times. It's really uh, all over the world. So, so it's an easy way to get free press for free. So you literally have to reply to the email and um, all depending on which news or is on the other end. Exactly. And if you have knowledge about what they're working on, you can get in the paper. Isn't that cool? My, how technology has changed. Jeez. Um, you don't necessarily have to call a report anymore. <laughs> exactly. Although, my, my God. Um, although, filling out those submit a story button are difficult. So, do you think ever Help a Reporter would have submitted a story idea or no? Um, I mean, reporters issue stuff from, for, for Harrow all the time, and, um, you know, it's very easy to do. They simply they can simply send any request they want, and, and the media, you know, it'll be sent out to our to our sources. So it's, it's great for reporters, and it's great for, uh, for sources as well. It, that's, and that's the thing. The key is to benefit everyone. Yes, and I apologize for the coughing attack. Gee. Not a problem. That the key is to benefit everyone. And that's why I wanted you on this podcast is to get, to pick your brain a little bit, to understand how ADD works and to understand your fascinating history. And so how many episodes have you done of your podcast? Uh, we've done about 62 of the podcast so far. We're a little over a year old. So it's, it's really getting getting pretty exciting. 62 episodes. Now I'm going to ask you a favorite child question. What has been your favorite episode that you have done? I think there are two of them, uh, three of them, actually. The, the, the first favorite one was, obviously, we had Tony Robbins on the podcast, and he was just amazing. He spoke for 50 minutes. I don't think he took one breath. And then um, I interviewed a, a lovely woman named um, uh, uh, Rachel Cotton, 
And Rachel showed us that, um, you know, you can be a Harvard PhD student um, who also has uh, ADHD and it, it doesn't have to hold you down. And then finally, just last week, we interviewed um, an ex-girlfriend of mine, uh, Dr. Jennifer Hartstein, who's a doctor, a psychiatrist, psychologist who works with high-risk kids. And she talked about how she sort of knew that I had ADHD before I did because we were dating. So it was, you know, we've had some really, really great people on the podcast. I I could only imagine what you thought when she admitted that public way. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, I was, it was honest, and I appreciated it. Well, at least people are honest, but I could only imagine when she had when she admitted that publicly, because you've got to remember, podcasts are public. And so, do you think this podcasting realm is helping all of us learn about different disabilities? I hope so. My goal is really to allow, uh, to, to let people understand that, that what we have is not a disability, and that if we, if we use it the right way, it really can be an ability. That's the goal. I highly agree with you on that one. And so where can people find you, and where can people get a hold of this amazing podcast? So my life is at shankman.com, and the podcast is at fasterthannormal.com, and you can find it on iTunes or Stitcher or Google Play. Uh, just search Faster Than Normal. And before I let you go back to your amazing work, with Fast and the Normal, I'm actually going to let you ask me a couple questions about anything that you may be interested in finding out from me. Well, how long have you been doing this show? I have been doing this show for about a good solid four years, but I have wow. been, well, more than that, maybe five years. But I haven't been podcasting for – I've been podcasting for two years. Wow. How do you um, – what's your favorite social network to use? Oh, my favorite social network. It was Facebook, but now it's Twitter. <laughs> really? Yes. And what do you – which one do you see – which one do you see eventually being the best one forever? Twitter. Twitter yeah. because you can um, you can type in hashtags and anyone can join the conversation. Yeah. And anyone can join the conversation with with Facebook. There's no hashtag whatsoever. Facebook tries, but um, it's you can't have open dialogue with two people on Facebook. It's one-to-one conversation. Right, understood. So that's why I love Twitter. Excellent. Okay, well, very cool. Well, thank you. I really appreciate. I really appreciate you uh, letting allowing me to be on. Oh, you you are welcome. I just have to now listen to your podcast, and I appreciate Peter's insight. And again, you guys. This podcast has been sponsored by Kitter, K-I-T-T-E-R, and they go by Go Go Kitter on Twitter. And speaking of, they compose the tweet, or you can compose the tweet, but the cool thing is they put the trending hashtag with it so you guys don't get lost in the heat. And, again, you guys, I thank Peter for sharing his knowledge this morning or not, and I hope you guys tune into Peter's podcast, God knows I will, and then I hope you guys enjoy another fabulous episode. Thanks to you guys.